Sophia here from CoachSophiaFitness.com. I wanted to share my experience with my recent injury and include all of the tips and things that have been helpful so far. So a few weeks ago we went uh, to Hawaii for vacation and I ended up breaking my toe on the beach. So it's been about five weeks now since the fracture happened. So I've learned a lot for the past five weeks and I wanted to share everything here. Sometimes you really want to get advice from someone who's been there and uh, have actually gone through what you're going through. So I want to talk uh, first about the first one to three weeks and then I'm going to be talking about um, how to avoid getting muscle pain afterward because I've noticed you know that my hips are getting tighter my lower back is also getting more achy because I've been compensating and moving different way so I'm going to be including a few tips so that you can avoid complications but mostly like muscular imbalances as well after the injury because it does change the way you're moving and you have to compensate because that's the only way for you to move and walk and um, just get things done so for me, it was a middle toe fracture. So actually my toe bent, so they had to numb it and they had to put it back in place. But the doctor at the emergency room just body taped it and she told me that I just need to body tape it, just take it easy, there isn't really much I can do. So when you first uh, experience an acute injury like a fracture or a muscle sprain, then you're going to be going through inflammation for up to one week. And it's very important to follow the rice method here. So uh, you want to protect the area, you want to uh, elevate, put ice on it to reduce the swelling inflammation. So it's very important to first, you know, get advice from a doctor who will assess your injury and see, you know, what type of uh, fracture you've sustained and they will give you the proper way to handle the injury. So on that first week, up to two weeks it's gonna be very exhausting and you don't even want to be pushing yourself anyway so it's very important to just rest and let your body heal go through that inflammation phase so when I was in the emergency room they did give me so they gave me these shoes and these are supposed to keep your your foot flat so because you're not supposed to be bending your toes so it just helps um, keep your toes and your whole foot flat you're supposed to immobilize your foot However, um, I, what I noticed was that my ankle was moving a lot. There was not much support here. And um, I ended up getting a lot of ankle pain and I just didn't feel supported. And I've been doing some research online as well. And uh, apparently you want your whole foot to be immobilized for those few weeks, the first few weeks. And it is best to actually get a walking boot. So I ended up going around Hawaii looking for the walking boot and I finally found it at a medical store. I've worn this everywhere and it might look like too much for a toe, but believe me, your whole foot, like my whole foot was swollen, it was bruised, it hurts, you know, my ankle, I couldn't even move my ankle. So even though it was just one toe and I didn't think that it was going to affect me that much, this really made a huge difference. I highly recommend that you look for this. There are a lot of options on Amazon. But uh, make sure to get the walking boot. It really made a huge difference. And also my ankle was not moving. So it just supported my whole leg. And I was able to actually put a little bit of weight on it. And just walk a little bit more normally. For the other shoe, I can see it as a transition from the boot. But I would not rely on this. Especially if you plan to walk outside or you know go to work and stuff like that. I wouldn't rely on this for the whole recovery. The other tip also I want to give was uh, for the, the the tape that I used to body tape my toe. So they gave me just a normal tape at the hospital but it, it just felt really tight around my toe. So I really recommend that you get this uh, kind of uh, sticky elastic cloth. I actually cut it in the middle because it's too wide so I cut it in the middle and I only use one side to body tape my toe to the toe next to it and it's been really great like you just change it every day after your shower and also make sure to put something in between your toes like a, a thin cloth or um, cotton because your skin will get very irritated it will get very dry and just dehydrated one of the things also that really helped me on that first week was comfrey and I found comfrey in Hawaii but uh, you can buy it online as well but 
Comfrey is really great just to help with inflammation. It really helps with the swelling and with the bruising. I usually do this uh, before I body tape. So I take a shower, change the tape, put this on, you know, let my foot rest for 10 minutes, 15 minutes while I read or watch TV. And then before I go to bed, I body tape. Make sure that you body tape your toes because while I was sleeping a few times, I actually, it was like a reflex and I moved my toes and it hurt so bad, it woke me up. So make sure that you body tape your toes so it stays stable at night. We're moving, you don't know what you're doing at night, so you may hit your toe or move it really fast. You don't want to break it again, especially on that first uh, couple of weeks when your bone is still healing. What I noticed also on the first week was that because, you know, I was injured, I would start to fall asleep really early because I was exhausted. And the reason why I was exhausted was because um, I had this injury and now everything is just becoming really hard to do. Even walking, I couldn't walk on my foot. So I had to put all my weight on my left leg and I had to use my left leg, jump around, you know, that was before I got the boot because the other uh, shoe wasn't stable enough so I would only wear it a few times but when I was at home I had to use my left foot to move around and it was just really exhausting, um, especially when you have to go up and down the stairs or just, you know, it was, it was really challenging me. Plus, your body is trying to heal itself, it's going through like an acute injury, so you're going to feel very tired, very exhausted, it's natural, just make sure that you sleep very early, I mean you're going to fall asleep anyways very early, but um, make sure that you're sleeping enough, that you know, you get your 8 to 9 hours of sleep or even more to um, help your body heal, it's, it's just a very natural process, your body's going to completely almost shut down because the healing process requires a lot of energy. So it's a natural thing. Make sure that you support your body with a lot of healthy foods that first couple weeks. Um, for me, I found some bone broth in Hawaii um, and I was making soups, but and I was also eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. Even when I came back home, I was still doing that. And I will get to the supplements um, parts in a little bit, but I just wanted to mention that here. So that first week, up to two weeks, very important phase. You don't want to abuse your toe, don't force walking on it or anything. It really sucks, like it hurts, your foot is going to swell and everything, but just rest, elevate, put ice on it, uh, sleep extra, and just lo let your body do its thing. One thing, very important thing I wanted to mention was when you're taking a shower, be very careful. It was actually a one of the most dangerous uh, times so make sure that you get maybe a shower uh, chair or something stable because it, you could you know you're on one leg you can't really stabilize yourself there's water it's slippery so make sure that you're safe when you're taking a shower um, and also when you're going up and down the stairs make sure that you're stable there's someone there to help you uh, one thing I recommend is that you get a pair of crutches and I know that it may sound like it's too much but I did get a pair of crutches but they really really helped um, you don't want to be putting weight on your foot you want to let your toe heal and they really help to keep you stable without putting all of your weight on your left leg because what you'll notice is that first couple days it may be okay that you're just walking mostly on the left leg but after a few days you're, you're gonna start having hip pain and it's just a lot of compensation you can't keep doing it for five to six weeks, which is the average time that you need for your toe to heal. So getting crutches is going to help you balance your weight and it will help you overall, even uh, with mobility, you're gonna be able to move around more. I only used two the first couple of days, but after that I was only using one crutch. Um, but I think that they, are wor they were worth it and they were very helpful. So the second and the third week were, were the most frustrating because it felt like my toe just was not even changed, like nothing was changing, everything looked the same and I wasn't sure why it wasn't improving, right? I wanted it to be quick, I was really getting sick and tired of the crutches and you know having to put the, the shoe on early in the morning because you can't really walk around without having the shoe and then your body's just achy, your ankle hurts, your left hip hurts, everything is just 
you, you, you start, it starts to get to you because it's the third week and you, you know, you, I, I wasn't able to work out. I just, it, it's going to get to you mentally, but just stay strong. And also the other thing I noticed was that because I was only wearing the boot on one leg, there was some height discrepancy. So I had one hip that was higher than the other and I was completely aware of that and that's not good. So what I actually started doing was that I was wearing the other shoe on the left leg. So I had one boot on the right leg, the other shoe on the left leg, just to kind of balance the height. I actually did not know that there was a thing that you buy that levels up your height, but I found out about it like really late later on. But I would totally get that because the uh, discrepancy or the change in height really, really affects your hips. And I was getting so sore and tight and just achy everywhere because of that. And once I actually put the, the other shoe on the left leg, it was a huge difference and it really improved my hip pain. Like I had hip pain for two days in a row. It was crazy. I didn't have I didn't have hip pain for years, and I was really scared that I was going to reawaken all of my old injuries and have a flare up. You know. And but once I did that, the pain just went away on its own. So I knew that it was just the height uh, change. Make sure that you still do something at home. For example, foam roll your hips. Um, you can. What I do is that you know my toe is body taped. I put the I put two socks on, and then um, I get on the floor and then I foam roll my quads. You can keep your foot bent so that um, your toes are not touching the floor and or I just put my other leg underneath my uh, injured legs so that you know I'm not bumping it against the ground so, but then I foam roll my quads because your hip flexors are gonna get really tight because you have almost ankle weight so I had the boot on one leg so they're a little bit heavy so it was like having ankle weight on my right leg for four weeks so your leg is gonna get really sore so try to balance out try to release the trigger points and uh, foam roll your calves my left calf was full of trigger points I couldn't even foam roll it the first time it, it just hurt and I could feel them you know so keep working on it every day before you go to bed because you don't want those things to become permanent I'm trying to just release tightness um, release anything that could affect my movement later on so I, I said that the first three weeks things are gonna look pretty much the same but on the fourth week was the week that I started to notice major improvement so the bruising was almost gone and my toe the color was starting to look a little bit similar to the other toes I still could have could have put uh, weight on my foot and uh, but at least now I could see some uh, improvements and knowing that it's healing because the first three weeks, I really couldn't tell. It felt like nothing was changing. It was really um, frustrating. But on the fourth week, you start noticing a little bit of improvement, and you notice that uh, you can at least now put some weight on your foot. Not all the whole foot, but maybe around like 40%. Uh, I still haven't been able to bend my toes, but. I notice right now that this is week five and I can put about 70% weight on my foot while I'm standing but I still can't bend my toes so I'm just taking it easy. I'm hoping by next week that I'll be able to at least bend my toes a little bit more. But the fifth and the sixth week are supposed to be better. So if you're on your third week right now or even the second week, just stay the course. It's going to get better. I know it's really frustrating and challenging, but it will get better. Um, one important thing, once you start to feel better, please do not uh, force it. Do not put more than you can handle on. Be very careful. Let the bone heal properly. You don't want to be breaking it over and over again. Make sure you protect your foot. So wear two socks. I've been wearing two socks just because it feels more supported. Stay off the toe as much as possible for the whole six to eight weeks just to make sure that it heals properly and that when once you put weight on it then it can handle that um when it comes to exercise i did notice that it's been really challenging for me to do pretty much anything especially the first four weeks i didn't want to put a load on my body standing on just one leg like that 
doesn't make sense to me it's not a safe thing to do so I have been trying to do some seated exercises as well as just on the ground core exercises glute exercises so I do plan to progress really slowly but it does affect you you're not really doing you know what you're used to do for at least six weeks so uh, it's very challenging mentally but you have to be strong and think of this phase as an important phase for your body to heal properly i mean i would be lying if i said that it didn't uh, affect me mentally like i really wanted to work out even on, during my vacation i wasn't able to do most of the things that i wanted to do uh, including swimming walking on the beach you know things like that and add to that not able to work out as well so it was very challenging mentally but it is what it is I can't really change it and all I have to do uh, is to just stay strong do what I can so I do want to mention a few supplements and foods that have been really helpful so far uh, first thing bone broth collagen protein I've been having collagen protein every day I put it in my coffee of course turmeric and ginger are very helpful as well especially during that inflammation phase and you want to keep taking them throughout the whole healing process uh, my foot is still swollen a little bit, so the inflammation is not going to be gone 100%. Also, I've been supplementing with vitamin D and vitamin C, as well as trying to get most of my nutrients from foods as well. So green uh, smoothies, and I put the ginger and the turmeric in them with the, uh, the collagen protein. So I do want to mention that on the fifth week, I haven't been wearing the boot as much, to be quite honest with you guys. I've been just really tired of it, you know. After the fourth week, you just get really tired of everything. Uh, my foot does look much better, uh, but I'm still not putting all the weight on it. But I've been starting to slowly put more weight and weight on my foot. So I haven't been uh, needing to use the boot that much. So I've been trying to just improve mobility right now and hoping that for next week my foot is hopefully going to be back to 100%. My toe looks a little better, you know, not like it used to. Just it's kind of healing straight. So you may notice that your toe is healing straight or and just you may also feel a little scared to move it because you're scared to break it again so I'm actually gonna wait until the full six weeks to even attempt to move my toe so my toe is still body taped to the other one next to it um, but I do move my ankle more and I'm able to put about 70% of my weight on my foot uh, so I haven't been able to drive so you know a lot of times I had to order food in I had to order groceries in. thankfully there are services for delivery so you know look them up there are services that could deliver groceries or food at your to your home so that was really helpful because uh, on that thir third week when I was home my husband was traveling I really couldn't go out it was minus 40 outside you know that was a lifesaver to just be able to order groceries so i'm really hoping that in a week or so i'm going to be back to my normal exercise videos and but i do plan to kind of document what i'm doing to go back and also maybe i'll do a video where i assess my muscular imbalances that may have developed and i'll make sure that i share them in a video so thank you guys again for watching if you're new don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video